Colin Joyce and in this project we're going to be using Scratch to create a game called Paddle Ball. The objective of the game is to keep the bouncing ball in the air by moving their paddle. This is a good beginner project for people just starting out using Scratch. To view the step-by-step -step instructions go to our website 123code.org forward slash Z166. Okay, so to get the step-by-step -step instructions of this project, go to the website 123codes.org and in the project code box here, enter in Z166 and click on the Start Project button. This will load up the steps of the project. As we can see down the bottom here, there's 11 different steps. And we can also see a preview of the game that we'll be making. So it's called Paddle Ball and it's very simple. So you control the green paddle by moving your mouse left and right and you do that to try and keep the ball from touching on the red line along the bottom. So let's go to step one. Step one is to create a new Scratch project and to delete the cat sprite that's added by default. In the green box here there's a little tip on how to create a new Scratch project. So if you click on that, it'll open up and it'll give you the link to the Scratch website. So if I click on that, it'll open up the Scratch website. And I then want to click on the Create button up the top left here to open up the Scratch project editor. So the way I normally work when I'm doing these projects with the lessons, with the instructions, is to have one tab open for the steps and then one tab open for your Scratch project. So I'm not signed in at the moment. So if you do want to sign in, click on the sign in button and enter in your username and password. This is a good idea to do if you want to save the project and open it up at a later stage. So I'm going to close the tutorial box that's here. And I also want to delete the Scratch sprite that's been added by default. So each time you start a new Scratch project, it always adds in the Scratch Cat Sprite by default. So to delete that, just click on the X in the blue circle here in the Sprite list, and that will delete the Sprite. So let's go back to our instructions. So step two is to add in the Paddle Sprite, the green Paddle Sprite. So we're gonna add this in from the Sprite library. Again, there's a little tip here in the, in the green box if you wanna see instructions on how to do it, but I'm gonna do it on screen here, so you'll be able to see here as well. To add a sprite, we can enter the bottom right to the little cat icon here in the blue circle. And we choose the magnifying glass, which will open up the sprite library. So as we can see, there's lots and lots of sprites. They're listed alphabetically. So if we wanted, we could scroll down until we find the P sprites for paddle. Or an easier way is just to type in the search box here, paddle. And it filters the results, the filters the available sprites just to show the ones that match what you've typed in. So we're going to add in the sprite by clicking on it. And as we can see, it adds in here to the stage area. Now, in this step two instructions, it also says to drag the paddle near the bottom of the stage area. And this is because we're going to be adding in a red line later on in the game. So we want to leave a little bit of a gap. So let's just drag it down towards the bottom, but again, leaving a little bit of gap underneath. Okay, let's move on to, to step three, which is to add in the football sprite. So again, the same steps, open up the sprite library and you can search for a ball. I'll show you all the different balls. And as we can see, we've got a soccer ball sprite here. So if you click on that, it adds it in. So the next step is to position the ball. So at the start of the game, we want the ball to start at the top center of the screen. And we can do this by setting the X and Y coordinates of the ball. So we're gonna actually add some code in, in this step. We're gonna add a when green flag clicked and a go to X zero Y 170. And what these numbers mean are the X and Y coordinates. So this grid here shows the X axis, which is the in orange, which determines whether where something is on the left and right of the screen. And the Y axis, which is in blue here, which determines where something is, whether it's up along the top or whether it's along the, the bottom. So right in the middle of the screen is X zero, Y zero. As we move to the right, the X number increases. So X1, X2, X10, X50, X100, X200, X300, and so on. And go back to the middle, X0. If we move to the left, 
x decreases. So x minus 1, minus 10, minus 50, minus 100, x minus 200, x minus 300, and so on. And in the same way, the y number determines up and down. So in the middle of the screen is y0. So as we move up, y goes up. y1, y2, y3, y50, y100, y200. And again, as we go down, y will decrease. So y minus 1, minus 2, minus 100, minus 200, minus 300, etc. So let's add this code. So we've chosen the soccer ball and we're going to go into the events toolbox and drag in at when green flag clicked. And then we're going to go into the motion toolbox and get the go to x, y block. Now, as we can see, it's already populated with some figures, with some numbers. So it's got x minus 62, y 24. That's the current position of the ball. So if I drag this to another place on the screen, you'll see that the numbers update. So it's now it's x 148, y 51. So we're going to bring in this block and we're going to set the x number to be zero. So I'll test that. It should put the ball in the center of the screen. And now we're going to change y to be 170. And that should put the ball up somewhere along the top. So let's click on the green flag and there we go. So let's move on to the next step, which is to make the ball bounce around. So we're going to firstly point the ball in a direction. So we're going to angle it down to the right. And then we're going to forever make it move 10 steps. And if it if it's on the edge of the screen, edge of the stage area, it will bounce. So we're going to add these new code blocks underneath the go to x, y. So first of all, it's the pointing direction block. So let's go into the motion toolbox to get that and bring in the point in direction. So if we want, we can just click in here and type in 120. Or if you wanted, you can drag this arrow around to get the figure that you want. Now we'll go into the control toolbox to get the forever block because we want the ball to forever keep on moving around. So that's why we use the forever block and we're going to put the move 10 steps inside of here. So motion toolbox, move 10 steps and put that inside. And before I put in the if on edge bounce block, let's just test and see how it works. So it does point it in the right direction, 120 degrees. It does make the ball move. But as you can see, it didn't bounce on the side on the edge of the screen. So to do that, we bring in the if on edge bounce block and put it inside the forever. And once you put that in, you'll see that the ball starts bouncing around. So let's move on to the next step, which is to control the paddle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set, we're going to forever set the X position of the paddle. So the X position, if you remember, is the left and right position of the paddle. And we're going to set that to whatever the mouse X position is. So the left and right position of the mouse. So let's go back into our code. We're going to click on the paddle so that we add in code for the paddle. You'll notice that the code for the soccer ball has disappeared, but that's still there. If you click on the soccer ball sprite, you'll see your code. But for now, let's add code to the paddle. So we're going to go into the events toolbox and bring in uh, when green flag clicked. Then we're going to go into the control toolbox and get a forever block because we forever want to do this. In the motion toolbox, there is a set x2 block. We put that inside the forever. So this is setting the x position of the paddle. And we want to sense where the mouse position is. So we're going to go into the sensing toolbox. And you'll see here there's a mouse x and a mouse y. So this is the mouse x position and the mouse y position. So we want to get the x position. And we're going to put that inside the set to uh, set x2 block. So if I click on my green flag, you can see now that the code has worked, that wherever I put my mouse pointer left and right, the paddle follows. So let's move on to the next step. And that's to make the ball bounce off the paddle. So we're going to add in some new code to the ball. And what we're going to do is forever, we're going to check if the ball is touching the paddle. And if it is, we're going to make a turn 180 degrees. So that's turning the opposite direction. And we're going to make it move 10 steps. So let's go back to our code. So this is code we're going to add to the ball. So we'll click on the ball. We're going to add in a new block, a new group of code. 
So we're going to add in another when green flag clicked and we're going to get the forever block and put it underneath because we're going to forever check this. So next we need an if then block and we're going to put that inside the forever. So if then blocks, they check a condition and they check if that condition is true or false. So the condition it's going to check is whether the ball is touching the paddle or not. So if it is touching the paddle, it'll be true and it'll run whatever code we put in the middle. If it's not true, then it'll just ignore this block and move on. So let's sense whether the ball is touching the paddle. So into the sensing toolbox, we've got a touching mouse pointer block here, but the little white arrow beside this lets you know that you can change that. So let's bring in this and put it inside the little gap of the if then. And we're going to click on the white arrow and change it to paddle. So again, we're adding this code to the ball. So if the ball is touching the paddle, then we want to make it turn 180 degrees. So to make a turn is in the motion toolbox. You can ch choose either a clockwise turn or an anti-clockwise turn. Makes no difference. Um, we're going to make it turn 180 degrees. So that's the opposite direction. And then we're going to make it move 10 steps away from the paddle. And then this move 10 steps in the forever will then kick in and keep on moving it away. So let's try it out. Click on the green flag and I can move my paddle. And as you can see, when the ball hits the paddle, it turns 180 degrees and moves away. OK, so let's move on to the next step. At the moment, our game is looking a little bit bland. We just have a white background, so we're going to make it look a little bit better. So the next step is to add in a backdrop. Again, in the green box here, there's a tip on how to add it. It'll give you the step by step instructions of how to add a backdrop from the library, but I'm also going to do it on screen here. So down the bottom right, there's a little picture icon here. And again, you can open up something, you can add a backdrop from the library, you can paint a new backdrop, you can choose or get a random backdrop from the library, or you can even upload your own picture as a backdrop. So we're going to open up the backdrop library. So as you can see, there's lots and lots of different backdrops. I want to get the kind of space stars one. So I'm going to click on the space category here and just show me the space ones. And I'm going to choose the stars backdrop and as we can see it'll take a couple of seconds and then it'll add it in to your game so already straight away your game looks a little bit better so the next step is to add the game over line so what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a red line along the bottom of the stage area in the step-by-step -step instructions if you click on this image here it'll show you a little video of how to do it but I'm going to do it on the screen here. So first step is to choose the backdrop here in the stage area and then to click on the backdrops tab up the, the top left here. So what we want to do, this opens up the backdrop editor and we want to draw a red line along the bottom. So we're going to choose the line tool by clicking on it and then we're going to choose what color we want to add. So using the slider here, I'm going to go all the way to the right to choose a red color. The number here is the thickness of the line. So at the moment it's set to 10, which is that thick. If we want it, we can make it bigger. If I go to 20, it'll be a little bit thicker, like that thick. So now I'm going to use the undo button to get rid of those. So I'm happy with my thickness of 20. I'm going to go down to the very bottom left. I'm going to put my mouse pointer just there and hold down my left button. Then I'm going to drag across still holding my left mouse button down and try and straighten out the line, drag, drag it all the way across to the right hand side and then let go. And that will put in the red line into your stage area like that. To go back to the code, just click on the code tab here up the top left. And going back to our instructions, we're going to look at the final step, which is to program the game over line. So we're going to add some new code in we're going to add it into the, the group of blocks where we checked if the ball was touching the paddle. But this time we're going to add in another if uh, underneath the previous if touching paddle block. So we're going to check if it's touching the red of the line. And if it is touching the red of the line, then we're going to use the stop all block to stop everything in the game. So game over. So let's switch back to our code. So this is code we're adding to the ball. 
So let's click on the ball sprite. Let's move our code over, tidy it up. So we want to add another if block inside this forever block. So we're going to forever check if the ball is touching the red line or not. If it is touching the red line, then that's game over. We'll, we'll use the stop all block. So let's go into the control toolbox to get an if then block. And we're going to put it inside the forever, but underneath the previous if then. We'll go into sensing to get our touching color block. So that will go inside the gap of the if then. At the moment, this is uh, set to a kind of lime green. Now we want to set it to the red of our game over line. So to do that, we click on the color in the block. It'll open up this little options box where we can change the color using the sliders, or we can use the eyedrop eyedropper tool, which is very handy for picking out exact colors. When you click on it, you'll notice your screen goes gray apart from the stage area. But when you move your mouse over the stage area, you'll see you'll get a magnifying glass. So it lets you uh, select uh, whatever color you want. So we want to get the red of the game over line. So if I click that once, that puts the red into the block. So the last step then, the last block to put in is to stop all block. So this will happen if the ball touches the red line. So this will stop all the scripts and everything will freeze on the screen. So game over. So let's test it out. We'll start off our game. So when we hit, the, hit it off the paddle, it bounces up. But when it touches the red line, as we can see, it detects it and it runs to stop all blocks. So game over. So that's all the code added to the game. You can play the game as it is and have some fun playing it. Or if you want, for step 11, you could challenge yourself to see if you could improve the game. So maybe you might want to add in sounds when the ball touches the paddle or if it touches the red line. You might want to add in a score so to keep count of how many times the ball hits the paddle. You could even make the game more difficult so as your score gets higher, the ball could start moving faster around the screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to keep up to date with all our latest coding projects, make sure to subscribe. And if you've got any suggestions on videos you'd like us to make, make sure to comment below.